This is a map of bike path density in Europe. All the purple lines are bike paths, and if you devote your attention to the left part of this map, you'll see a coastal country with a lot of purple lines. This is the Netherlands, a densely populated country that knows a thing or two about designing brilliant infrastructure. And the bike paths play a significant role in that. See, with a population of 17.4 million people and a landmass of approximately 41.5 thousand square kilometers, the Netherlands is smaller in size yet more densely populated than most European countries. So, in order to navigate that, they've come up with effective and interesting ways to handle population movement in and around their country. The most notable of which is, of course, the cycling infrastructure. And yes, it is as serious as everybody says it is as it enables the 23 million bikes that are in the Netherlands to roam the streets. And by the way, 23 million bikes means that there are 1.3 bikes per capita. That's absolutely insane. I mean, what would the bike per capita be in the United States? Maybe 0.5? What? It's 0.3. That would mean if you met an American, there is a greater chance they're obese than them owning a bicycle. Matt. Anyway, when you combine the Netherlands' bike infrastructure with its amazing public transport, you get a ridiculously smooth and efficient system. Here's how it works in Amsterdam. Commuters will use their bikes to get to and enter transit stations, where they simply park their bikes in these enormous bike parking garages. Then they'll travel on either a bus, tram or train to their final destination. But most of the time the fastest and most convenient option is simply taking the bikes to the final destination. But why is cycling the most convenient option? What has the Netherlands done for this to be the case? Well, the country has made cycling incredibly easy, with 32,000 kilometers of bike lanes that aren't just a small strip along a heavily trafficked road. Now, the Dutch do things differently. They have marked out red asphalt pavements like this, strictly for cyclists. The only time cars and bikes end up on the same road is when the speed limit is less than 30 kilometers an hour, and car volume is low any higher than that and there is a clear separation like this one, even on highways and roundabouts. But the Netherlands is a whole lot more than just biking and their capital city, Amsterdam. And to be honest, the most impressive infrastructure in the Netherlands is not even in Amsterdam. To see that, we have to go to Utrecht, a city that lies right here south of Amsterdam. It hosts the largest bike parking facility in the world, room to park over 12,500 thousand bicycles, and it has 24-7 camera surveillance. Now, I know what you're probably thinking. There's no way this can be replicated in other countries. This is alien-like. But that's a myth and there is a very simple reason for that. Just take a look at Rotterdam. During World War II, the city was practically demolished and looked, well, like this. The Dutch had to rebuild everything, and they chose to go for an automobile-centered design, which is exactly how North American cities were built too. And considering where the Netherlands is today, it's crazy to think that many Dutch cities were heading in this direction too. But by the 70s, Rotterdam residents were tired of major road fatalities and plummeting cycling and walking culture. So they demanded reform and the regulators listened. Public transportation was then heavily invested in, and roads were rebuilt to facilitate bike lanes. After which, cycling regained its popularity. This just goes to show that even North American cities can do this if they choose to do so. But the determinism and people-centered planning of the Netherlands extends out of the cities and into Dutch suburbs as well. To bring this point home, let's compare typical Dutch suburbs to those in a state that's just as bustling and growing in the United States, Florida. Now sure, Florida is 3.4 times larger than the Netherlands, but the argument should still stand. So here is a typical Miami suburb. What do you notice? There's a lot of greenery, but mostly there's a lot of roads and they're specifically made for cars. Sure, there are sidewalks, but they are thin and can barely accommodate a cycler and pedestrian at the same time. And now let's look at a Dutch suburb. The homes here are much smaller, and that's an important detail, as it leaves more space for communal centers like parks and proper biking and walking lanes separated from the road by greenery. I can definitely understand that it seems like a sacrifice to have smaller homes, but what you get in return is efficiency. And if time is the most valuable thing we have, then this system is superior. And while Dutch efficiency has become somewhat of a trademark for the country, things weren't always so blissful and enviable. 
You see, technically speaking, a large part of the Netherlands should not exist, and this is what amazes me the most. See, the Netherlands was notorious for constant flooding thanks to its low elevation and closeness to the North Sea. But the Dutch have found a way to beat the ocean multiple times. This is the reason why nearly 20% of the land in the Netherlands is reclaimed land from the many marshes, swamps, lakes, and of course the sea. But how? Well, two words. Delta works. After a deadly storm in 1953 that covered over 150,000 hectares of land and took the lives of an estimated 2,000 people, the Dutch decided something had to be done. Delta Works was the answer. Delta Works is a vast network of 13 dams and barriers, featuring sluices, locks, dikes and levees. They shelter off these four inlets, namely Herringletdam, Dam, Oosterscheldekering and Fersegatam. I'm sorry, Dutch people, I tried my best. Anyway, they used these to reduce the coastline by 700 kilometers and remove the need for smaller and weaker levees and dams that would require constant maintenance. Pretty ingenious, I gotta say. But the Dutch haven't just prevented floodings, they've also created new land. And they achieved this without using modern technology. How? Well, first they would section off the areas they wanted to reclaim where after they would drain the water out by harvesting the energy of the wind using, of course, windmills. This created flat plains comprised of a very unique soil that happens to be perfect for growing tulips. And this is why the Netherlands account for 80% of the world's tulip exports, which is kind of strange to think about. But today, these waters and innovations have earned the Netherlands some pretty envious titles, including the largest storm surge barrier in the world, that laid the ground for the largest and most efficient seaport in Europe, the port of Rotterdam. Located here in the delta of the Rhine and Meuse rivers, Rotterdam is in a perfect strategic location for ships coming from or going into the North Sea. To understand the sheer size of this port, here is a map of Manhattan laid on top. As you can see, the port of Rotterdam is about one and a half times the size of Manhattan. It's huge. And with 82.5% of the Netherlands GDP coming from exports, it's fair to say that the port of Rotterdam is really important. I could go on and on about this port's efficiency, but all you need to know is that it wins best port infrastructure year after year. The Dutch are incredibly talented at designing great infrastructure. I mean, just look at the Amsterdam airport, Schiphol, the third busiest airport in Europe. It looks pretty average, until you consider the number of people moving through this structure. Schiphol facilitates 68 to 80 million passengers annually to 332 direct destinations. Utilizing its six runways facing multiple directions, Schiphol coordinates an average of 1500 to 1600 departures and landings per day, giving them an hourly average of 110 to 120 aircrafts. And Schiphol accomplishes this despite being smaller than other major airports airports like Adolfo Suarez Madrid in Spain or the Leonardo da Vinci International Airport in Italy. The best thing about this airport though is that once passengers arrive, they have a number of transportation options, as the high-speed tellers and Columbus trains can be accessed just beneath the terminal building. From here, you can take a 15-minute ride to the Amsterdam Central Station, or use the Dutch rail network to travel across the country. Honestly, you could go anywhere from here. If trains aren't your style, then the airport offers affordable express buses as well. The funny thing about this airport though is that it's 4 meters below sea level, sitting on what used to be Harlem Lake. But all in all though, the Netherlands is an overload of intelligent design, and while some people might think it's nearly impossible to implement these methods into other countries, the reality is these methods can be replicated any place in the world if the people and leadership are willing to collaborate and listen to one another and invest in infrastructure that is people, environment and future centered. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.